Hello and welcome to the Vaults of Terror, my name is Ed and today we're going to be continuing our Space Marines Chapters videos with the Dark Angels. Specifically, we're going to be talking a little bit about the Fallen. Now, if you've not watched my other videos, the Fallen are a group of Dark Angels who rebelled during the Horus Heresy and turned against the Emperor and the Imperium. Thus, they are no longer part of the Dark Angels chapter and it's that chapter's goal to hunt them all down and release them from their sin, i.e. getting them to repent and turn back to the light of the Emperor before being executed for their treacherous nature. Now, what I'm going to go through here today is also going to talk a little bit about some of the books that were written in the Horus Heresy series, specifically those focusing on the Dark Angels. So if you've not read those yet, I recommend you go out and read those first, still not sponsored by the Black Library, and then you can come back to this video and we can have a little chat. Then you can come back to this video with all the knowledge that you need to continue. So what I want to just go over briefly is something I've mentioned in my previous video, is the history of how the Fallen came to be. So originally the Fallen were of course Dark Angels who journeyed with the Lion during the Great Crusade and fought with him on the multitude of battlefields. However, however, after a time, Lion decided to send several of his followers back to Caliban in order to preserve the intake of recruits to the chapter and also to get rid of some of the more dangerous elements he saw within his chapter, such as the librarians. As such, he sent Luther, his second in command, back to Caliban along with most of his librarians and many other marines. Instead of feeling like this was an honour to preserve the planet, now the Lion may not have seen this as a big thing, but from the Fallen's perspective they felt snubbed almost, that they were being sent back to Caliban and not allowed to earn any more honour on behalf of their chapter. Especially Luther, who has always been in the shadow of Lion ever since Lion emerged from the forests of Caliban and rose in the ranks of his order. So over time, it was inevitable that Luther would start to fall to the touches of chaos because, in fact, Caliban is very close to the Eye of Terror and so the influence of chaos was strong on that planet. Now, after an unknown amount of time, many, many decades, most of the Dark Angels on the homeworld had turned to Luther's way of thinking and decided that the Lion was no longer worthy of their loyalty and that they would turn away from him and follow Luther. Now, of course the Lion didn't know anything about this. When he was off fighting in the Great Crusade, he believed his homeworld was safe. And even when he was mopping up the danger at the Siege of Terror, he didn't know that there was a rebellion going on on his own homeworld. When he returned, of course, as I've mentioned before, it was a very different story. As I've mentioned, the planetary defences, nominally under Luther's control, opened fire on the Dark Angel's fleet, attempting to prevent them from coming home. Now, of course, the Lion withdrew his fleet to prevent any further damage and found out from trader captains in his system that the world of Caliban had declared independence under Luther and that Luther was now the nominal leader on that planet. Of course, the Lion was incensed with anger and thus returned to Caliban and began to shell Dark Angel's positions on the planet. Leaving his flagship, the Lion then went down to the planet and fought Luther in close combat, challenging him as the Knights of Oldwood to a duel to the death in order to restore honour to the chapter and remove this traitor. Now, of course, because Luther had sided with Chaos, he was imbued with some of their gifts, and thus, just like Horus against Sanguinius and the Emperor, he was a lot more powerful than he had once been. And so it was, in fact, Luther who struck a mortal blow using psychic powers against the Lion. Now, when he did this, such was the pain he saw on the Lion's face, both internal and external, that it finally broke through the shell that enclosed his mind all these years, and he saw what he had done. He fell catatonic beside the lion, and his mind snapped under the weight of the treachery that he had perpetrated. Now, as I've mentioned, the Chaos Gods were none too happy with the fact that their chosen pawn had again failed them, and thus they opened a warp rift on the planet. That warp rift actually sucked up a lot of the Fallen who were still fighting on the planet. Combined with the orbital bombardment, it actually destroyed a vast amount of the planet's crust, leading to the entire planet collapsing and becoming an asteroid field. All that was found when they finally returned to the Tower of Angels, which was the, one of the few remaining structures that still survived on a large chunk of the planet, all that was found that was left was Luther himself, insanely babbling that the Warp Gods had taken the Lion and he would return. Now, that is the side of the story most people know, but very few people see this from the Fallen's perspective. Now, there's two different perspectives we know of. We know that we know of the side which is said in the books where they felt snubbed and felt that they had to turn away from the Emperor in order to become their own people, to uh, regain their own honour in their own eyes. However, there is also another side to this. There is the side that says that one of the commanders of the force, known as Astalan, who apparently was the one who ordered the bombardment of the Lion's fleet, 
Wright claimed that the line was actually corrupted by Chaos because of his time spent in the Chaos-touched forests on Caliban. This corruption, he said, has seeped into the lion, and thus meant that although he actually followed the ways of chaos, he followed the emperor as a method of deception, Luther following him, in fact, because although he also saw that the lion was touched by chaos, he followed the emperor in order to try and find a way of preventing lion's corruption from spreading. Now, we don't know if this is true, or if this is some sort of fabrication by a fallen in order to besmirch the name of the lion. It does sound like that, but because of the time that the lion was found, there has always been some debate as to whether or not this may be true. They also cite the fact that it took the lion a very long time to arrive at the Siege of Terror, longer than it should have done, although it could be explained by warp storms or intervention by the Night Lords. However, this has always sat at the back of the mind of many who look at the Dark Angel history, wondering if this could be a point. So the thing about the Fallen is that not all of them fell to chaos as well. This is something that a lot of people misinterpret. A lot of the Fallen were, were of course taken by chaos and made into chaos space marines. They began to believe in the ways of the chaos gods and were blessed by them in some way, you could say. However, there were many who believed that the line may have been corrupt, but the Emperor was in fact right, who did not join chaos. However, they did not see the Imperium as something that should be gloriously followed due to the fact that it was founded on corrupt principles, i.e. by the Lion and his brother. They work as independent entities. They work as pirates, smugglers, sort of people who go against the laws of the Imperium and try to undercut its authority, but at the same time do not follow the gods of chaos, who they believe to be as equally distasteful as the Imperium itself. There are even some of the fallen who renounce their warrior capabilities entirely. They've made their ways to very peaceful planets or planets far up the way and tried to maintain a normal life. Of course, because of their stature, they are almost impossible to hide. However, many who have never seen a space before do not know them without their armour, so just believe these people to be either very tall human beings or just those who are slightly abhuman, such as the Ogrins, and that is why it's been so difficult for the Dark Angels to hunt for some of them, because some of them have literally renounced their warrior capabilities and become normal people. And that's really the perspective of the Fallen I wanted to give. There are many other characters that are within this Fallen bracket, but I really want to go over those in my character videos that are going to be at the end of my run of videos. So I think that's about it for today for The Fallen. Now I'm sure everyone else has their own perspectives on why The Fallen actually continue to fight and why The Fallen actually separated from the Imperium in the first place, so if you'd like to mention those in the comments below that would be great. Again, we're coming to the end of our Dark Angels videos, we're going to have one more I think on the separate companies of the Dark Angels and some of their separate equipment, and then that should be about it and we'll move on to a new chapter, so do vote in the comments below for for your preferred chapter. That's everything I wanted to say today. I hope to see you next time on the Vaults of Terror.